Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Softball on ESPN, presented by our official climate finance partner, Aspiration. The stage is set here in Rosemont, Illinois. Parkway Bank Sports Complex, just a month after the finish of the shortened AUX season, it is the fourth Athletes Unlimited Softball Championship season. Team McClenney and Team Denham kicking things off. When Savekis returns, Nadia Taylor back in town. In the book of Unlimited, everybody wants their name etched there. All four teams getting together for a group photo to kick off season four. Haley McClenney has finished in the top 12 of all the Athletes Unlimited seasons she has participated in. Third, last championship season. Could it be her year? Could Alyssa Denham improve? She was in second place last year, just 64 points off the top spot behind Deja Mulipola. Here's what Athletes Unlimited softball is. 60 players here at the championship season, 15 per team. They're drafted each week by the team captains. Those are the top four players on the leaderboard. That leaderboard determined by our innovative scoring system. We'll tell you all about that as we go along. Alongside the two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough, I'm Chucky Kemp. Three former champions here, a ton of stars who are really at the top of their game right now. We're in for a great season. This is going to be so awesome. There is just such a special feeling about opening day and a buzz amongst all the players and on social media. They're ready to get going. The four captains that we had had such a great AU season back in 2022, including the champion Deja Mulipola, who gets to wear the gold. Alyssa Denham finished second, Haley McClinney finished in third place, and Shannon Rhodes was the 2022 Rookie of the Year. She'll be a first time captain. But Haley McClenney, let's talk a little bit about her because she is truly one of the best players in the country. She continues to do it year after year. She did it in college at Alabama, and she continues to do it as a pro. The way that she plays center field and covers so much ground is so special to watch. And then up at the plate, she's a career 382 hitter. She'll hit leadoff today and also patrol center field. Truly, she is an absolute star and a veteran in this league. And I think somebody who embraces the captain's role, this is the lineup she sends to the plate. Victoria Hayward, who seems to be one of her favorites on draft day. Then Mia Davidson, she liked what she saw from her at AUX, hitting 417 with five home runs. Sierra Romero returns. Sam Fisher, Daniel Gibson was tremendous at AUX. And we are ready for the fourth Athletes Unlimited championship season here in Rosemont, Illinois. Welcome back, Alyssa Denham, taking on Haley McClenney and starts her off with a strike on the outside corner. This should be tremendous. A great matchup to kick things off. Two big time players at the top of their game right now. Alyssa Denham in her third season out of Alvin, Texas, played at Arizona, taking on Haley McClenney, another veteran. 375 at AUX. Drove in seven, scored 10 times herself. Watches that one too far outside for ball two. Well, you know who else is from Alvin, Texas, home of Alyssa Denham? Do you know the answer to that? Are you? <laughs> I'm not. Okay, I was thinking <laughs> I thought you were from Houston, but. The, uh, close by, Alvin's close by to Houston, but Nolan Ryan ah, is from nice. Alvin, Texas. Okay. Yeah. Might have heard that name before. A few times, yeah, a few <laughs> times. And then bounced that one into Gwen Svekis, who she's very familiar with, having played with her in Japan all year. There is Alyssa Denham, who we talked about it. I think she is playing maybe the best softball of her life right now. She does walk McClenney to lead off the game. That's a dangerous player. And Haley McClenney is the first player on the leaderboard. I'm sure a lot of nerves are running for Alyssa Denham. This is all that she'll throw, a drop ball, rise, curve, screw, and change up. Look at the spin on her change up that she drops down to 40 miles an hour, the spin rate over 1600. She has really good spin, not gonna overpower you with speed, but can move the ball around. Played a lot of softball this season already in Japan. And as you mentioned, very comfortable throwing to Gwen Svekis, which she has been doing all summer long. She was an assistant coach at McNeese State last year, Alyssa Denham. She came into AUX. I was talking to her yesterday. And 
Said she just didn't feel like she was in shape, didn't feel like she was ready, so she stepped away from that position to focus fully on her playing career. She knew she wanted to continue playing. She's been in Japan since February, will go all the way through November, so at the end of this season, she'll go right back to Japan to finish off the second half of that season. As you see Victoria Hayward at the plate at 367 at AUX. Svek is trying to calm Denim down here on day number one. Six straight balls from her. She just tries to settle in right now. It is really hot today. There is some cloud cover now, which is helping significantly and a slight breeze coming in from center field. Yeah, you could feel it when we walked outside the hotel room immediately. The humidity, I, I feel like I'm back in Houston, Texas, actually. I mean, 70% humidity makes it feel like 95. I honestly feel like it <laughs> feels like 100 out there, especially when you're on the turf. Popped up, Svekis dropped it in foul territory. She can't believe it. it. Looked like she was looking at McClenny already. She absolutely was. And I mean, we've been watching Little League games all day, and it just doesn't matter what level you're playing at, college and pro. If you get ahead of yourself, if you keep your, or if you take your eye off the ball and think about the throw before you make it, stuff like that can happen. Very uncharacteristic for Svekis. Hayward knows she has another chance. 2-2 is fouled straight back. Just a reminder, though, isn't it, Chucky, on a day like today, it's the same game that you start playing when you're five or six years old, that you're still playing maybe into your 30s or into your 20s? This has been a busy day on our ESPN family of networks. All the Little League Softball World Series games trying to punch their tickets. Seen some good ones too. Oh, really good games. Just, I mean, right now there is softball on both ESPN and ESPN2, just at different levels. Just little young little little league players are trying to get here where these girls are. 3 2 from Denham looking for out number one. That's fouled back by Victoria Hayward. This is that duo, McClenny and Hayward, so similar at the plate in the sense that they are extremely difficult outs. You will just not get them to go down easily. They forced Denham to throw 12 pitches here already in the first. Eighth pitch to Hayward outside, back-to-back -back walks, and Haley McClenney and Victoria Hayward tied for first on the leaderboard early this season with eight points apiece. Yeah, I'm sure Alyssa Denham is just feeling some nerves out here today. We talked about it at the top of the show, just the buzz and the feeling of it being opening day, and you're so excited. Your adrenaline is running. She's back with a lot of players that she's very familiar with. How to work through that, especially in the first inning. Once you get past the first inning, then it feels like you're good to go. Mia Davidson. Second year out of Mississippi State. Watches strike one on the off speed from Denham. Good spot there, jumps ahead of Davidson, 0-2. Alyssa Denham participated in the championship season in 2021 and 2022, last year when she got second. Young fans, first game today at Athletes Unlimited. So cute. Denna made her Athletes Unlimited AUX debut last summer. She did play in that first season of AUX. Well, and Chucky, let me tell you, you make the cute little sign like that where it says it's your first game, like we're finding a way to get you on TV. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, Davidson skies this one into right field. Pianca Stelli has it for out number one, and the runners stay put at first and second. A big out right there. Castelli just got in today, actually, or excuse me, yesterday from Italy, landed at 3 o'clock yesterday. She's in right field today, ready to roll. Yeah, a lot of these players have been playing the past couple of weeks and playing in different countries, representing their own country. 
one of the great superstars of the game at the plate. Sierra Romero did not play in AUX this season. Second year, did play in the championship season and AUX last year. Finished 12th at AUX out of Murrieta, California. Maybe the best player ever out of the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, you just see her name and you think about how good of a player that she was at Michigan. Just ability to hit the long ball, the family that she comes from, full of baseball and softball athletes. With her sister, Sydney Romero, also playing. Mikey, her brother, drafted 24th overall by the Red Sox, and then the younger sister, who Sydney and Sierra both very high on, Sophia, who is going to Boise State. I've heard both of them say she is just a little stud. Just, it's in the blood, it runs in the family. Romero, deep to center, and off the base of the wall, she's in the second. Hayward coming around, they're gonna get her at the plate. Romero is back though, an RBI double for Sierra. Looked like Sierra Romero recognized this change up out of the hand. Gwen Speckis was set up outside. That ball was about a ball on the plate and Zirkel runs this one back. The wind is blowing in, so it seemed like it kept it in the ballpark. Victoria Hayward got such a good read from first base, tried to be aggressive, but the relay of bringing this ball in off the wall, Morgan Zirkel just didn't bobble it at all, allowed for that out to be had at home. Perfect throw and tag that second out. Denham does not get it on the outside corner there to lead off Sam Fisher. For Romero, that's 20 points on the double, puts her team up on the leaderboard here in the top of the first. Sam Fisher from Simi Valley, California, played her college ball at Loyola Marymount. Ground ball right side. Fielded by Josie Muffley, the rookie out of Florida State, and that'll do it. One run does come across. Sierra Romero delivers the RBI double. Team McClenney leading Team Denham. It turned out to be a beautiful day. Light breeze here in Rosemont. Team McClenney leading Team Denham. Opening day, the 2023 Athletes Unlimited Softball Championship season. Team Denham sends their lineup to the plate here in the bottom half. Amanda Lorenz in a familiar place, leading off the top of this dangerous order. Another Florida Gator right behind her, Kelsey Stewart Hunter, who just picked up the assistant coaching job at Ohio State today. And then two Utah alums, Anissa Ortez and Hannah Flippin. So many great storylines across the board here at Athletes Unlimited. This team is not short on those. How about Megan Faremo and what she has done 
at AUX in her rookie season. And then the WBSC World Cup qualifier, 10 innings pitch, no runs allowed, 15 strikeouts. Yeah, she's been busy this summer playing in the AUX season and then playing in Ireland with the U.S. national team. She's going to work for side to side with screwball and curveball. Really mix those two pitches. She can spin the ball more up in the zone with her rise ball too. But she paints the corner with her curve and rise. You can tell in that red area that the ball is flying through. Those are the sides of the plate that she likes to work. Nixon also a change up, drop it down about 10 to 15 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour. She is special. Two and one with a 4-4-1 ERA at AUX. Really impressive for the rookie. Pitchers did not have a lot of fun during that AUX season. The bats came out strong early. I thought the pitchers seemed to get better as the season went on. They're facing batters like Amanda Lorenz at the top of the order, a little bit difficult sometimes. Lorenz, right field, and gone! The first one of the championship season belongs to Amanda Lorenz. Okay, that's what you call looking for a pitch, hunting a pitch. Amanda Lorenz hunting the inner half. And she just crushes it. It, it. When you see a swing like that, it's almost like the hitter knows that it's coming, that they're anticipating that one pitch, looking for that one pitch, and they just unload on it. Amanda Lorenz hit three home runs during the AUX season, drove in 11. She has three top 11 finishes in her four seasons of Athletes Unlimited. 305 career hitter here in the Pro League. 1 0 from Faramo is in there for strike one, facing Kelsey Stewart Hunter. One thing to know, too, about Megan Framo, she is one of the harder throwers in the league, along with Rachel Garcia, who we also saw in the AUX season, who was the AUX champion. Ground ball back to Faramo. That's low and gets away from Gibson. So, miscue for Stewart Hunter to reach first. Not the start team that plenty had hoped for. Framo did a good job of coming right back to hit Kelsey Stewart Hunter, but Danielle Gibson doesn't come away with this throw. She should have this. It's in the ground a little bit. Actually, didn't even hit the ground. Could have had that pick in the air. Ertez with a beautiful bunt down the first baseline. She is out at first. Nice play by Gibson. Linking up with the rookie, Rachel Becker. Yeah, I, li I like where her head was at with that drag bun after Danielle Gibson dropped that ball, test her again to see if she can make a play, and she did, comes right back. It's 10 points for Ertez on the sacrifice bunt. The next Utah product in line is Hannah Flippin. Love the left side of this infield for Team Denim. Putting the former Utah superstars back together again. Flipping out of Bonita, California. Ground ball up the middle. Sis Bates goes to third, and they almost surprised Stuart Hunter, but that probably saved a run. If that goes into center, that's probably the second run of the inning for Team Denim. So many things about this play. First of all, you're right, it absolutely does save a run because she lays out for this, doesn't let it get to the outfield, but then surprisingly throws to third base to try to get Kelsey Stewart Hunter just rounding hard. That is the best play that you can make right there because she knew she didn't have an out at first base, so she goes for the surprise throw to three. We get all the wows from Sis Bates, all the incredible plays, but just to think of what's going on mentally for her, play to play, defensively, pitch to pitch, it's really impressive because that's, she knows that beforehand, right? Yeah. If, if something like that happens, she's prepared for that. I, I, I think so, but I also think it can just be one of those plays that she's just so heads up with a feel of the game yeah. 
that she just thinks about, okay, I'm not going to have time at first. I'm going to go to third. It's the thing about situations in softball and playing defense. There's so many different plays for you to, to think how many outs are there, who's up, what speed is on the base pass, where am I actually fielding this ball, what's my arm strain? So many different options. 1-0, Erica Piancastelli. From Trieste, Italy, to Frankfurt, Germany, to Chicago, landing yesterday at 3 o'clock, returning after playing for Team Italy at the WBSC World Cup qualifier in Italy. This is kind of off the handle in front of McClenny. In comes Stuart Hunter, and Flippin is into third. And that's 10 inning win points, the first of the season for Team Denim. Costelli gets jammed up a little bit, but swings hard. And Haley McClenney in center field was running so hard for that, thinking that she had a chance to catch it. Kelsey Stewart-Hunter going to score easily, but good base running by Hannah Flippin to go first to third on that. McClenney thought with her arm that she's going to be able to get her. Out of the six hole, Gwen Svekis watches strike one from Faremo. Just one out in the inning. First and third here for Team Denim. Still a lot of damage could be done. Melissa Denim said Gwen Svekis was a must pick this week in the draft because they play together in Japan. Denim has started every regular season game for her team in the Japan Professional League. Svekis has caught her in all of those games. One one from Foremo. Good spot there for strike two. Gwen Svekis too has a history of finishing high on the leaderboard of the championship seasons. Highest that she's finished is 14, but in 2021 finished 10th, and 2020 finished fifth. Ground ball chance for two. Bates over to second from Rachel Becker. They do roll a pair. That could be important down the stretch. Nice defensive play, but Team Denim strikes. They answer right back. Amanda Lorenz leading off the game with this bomb that went 272 feet. That ball flew out of here. Now that's what it looks like to turn on a pitch. Two one, Team Denim takes the first inning win points of the season, going to the second. Already a lot of excitement here in this fourth championship season. Alongside Amanda Scarborough, I'm Chucky Kemp. Also joined down on the sideline by Savannah Collins, who I don't think there is anyone ever that knows more about Athletes Unlimited. You saw the drafts this week. I know you're excited for this championship season. What's on your mind as we get rolling today? 
Absolutely. I think what really sticks out to me is what are things we're seeing here in week one that we might see play out in week five? I'll start off with Team Dem Denim. You all were just talking about it with Gwen Speckis. I think that might be the duo to watch this season. We tend to have some players who pair up and kind of journey through the season together. And I think because of their history and their competition in Japan together, I think that could be one that we see really tie together. And often when players do that, they move up the leaderboard together as well. So from the draft, that really stuck, stuck out to me about Team Denim um, coming into week one. Yeah, and when you look at Team McClenny, Savannah, I see a lot of big time defensive players. Do you think that that played a part in her draft strategy? Absolutely, I was talking to her today and she said, when I go into a draft, I'm prioritizing three things. She said she's really looking at arms, big bats, and culture. And what she means by culture, she defined this so well. She said she wants people to buy into, we will climb the leaderboard together, regardless of how you do as an individual, if we win innings and we win games. She said the thing that she really thinks about when she's trying to make those picks is, do I want to lose with this person? And that's how she makes her decisions in that draft room. And she really just laid out what her vision is when she puts together, and this week, a blue squad. On the other side, a first team captain. We'll talk to you later tonight as well, but I have to ask about Shannon Rhodes and her approach because this is completely new for her after rookie season last year. Yep, at AUX, I talked to Shannon. I said, hey, what are some goals for the season? She goes, you know, I'd love I'd love to be a captain. That's a goal of mine. And I checked back in with her after the draft. She was like, I don't know, it's a lot. I was really nervous. She was like, that was a big goal to set for myself and to walk into week one and be a captain. She said it's been a lot to take in, but she's just been embracing it. And I'm excited to see how that team takes on a little bit of how she is and who her identity is as a player as well in game two today. Savannah, how, how about the atmosphere, too? We're looking at the draft recap right now. Rachel Garcia going first, of course, and she was tremendous at AUX. AUX versus championship season. What are some of the differences you're seeing as these players have come back to Rosemont and get ready for this year? Sure. I think at AUX, not only the captains, but the athletes as well can really focus on if I can just get hot right here at the beginning of the season or even in Series 2, I can push my way to the top. And, you know, Aubrey Leach talked a lot about that when she would draft. It was about who's hot. But really, in championship season, it seems like players take a little bit of a different approach of taking in the five full weeks, who is consistent, who will do well week to week to week because it is a longer period of time. And I really think the players lock in. Um, many of them use that AUX experience as a check-in of where they're at as an individual so that come championship season, um, they're really able to make a run to be number one on the leaderboard. Yeah, excited to see who emerges. Savannah, thank you so much. We will continue to check in with you on the field. Thanks, y'all. Savannah Collins does a tremendous job down there tracking down interviews. Love the interviews in the dugout. I think my favorite thing that we're able to do, we have so much access here, and Savannah does a tremendous job. There are a lot of storylines coming into this one. Who will emerge? Will we see some new captains? This first week especially, because everyone, everyone starts at zero. Anybody's ball game right now, and if you can jump out to a hot start, it can be the difference. Nobody out, Denham hit Danielle Gibson to lead off this inning. For Gibson, that's eight points. She stands at first base. Delaney Wiz in right field tonight. Somebody who had a big impact at AUX. She swings a really good bat. And I think somebody who, she was selected 39th overall in the draft. I think she's somebody who could climb up that draft board because of the bat she can swing. Yeah, she has a lot of pop in her battle. Seems to have a, a good approach at the plate, too. Knows what she's going up to the plate looking for. She hit 405 with 16 home runs and 63 RBIs as a senior at UCLA. One of a number of superstar Bruins here in Rosemont. Second year as a pro, first with Athletes Unlimited from Orcutt, California. Well, Pac-12 battle here, Arizona versus UCLA. This is off the handle in the left field and down in front of Lorenz. First and second, nobody out. He's so frustrating as an outfielder because these hitters are so good that oftentimes you're having a drop step back and play balls off the wall and defend behind you. And then when one gets blooped in like that, it can be so frustrating because pitcher made a good pitch, but that ball just had eyes. 
Odyssey Alexander. She's been getting loose out there. Such a different approach as a player having analyzed the league in AUX and how much different it is, the double headers, how much different is it as far as day to day knowing you've only got one game is that's popped up to flipping. <laughs> even even in college you kind of dread double headers. <laughs> but when the older you get, I think you start to dread them a little bit more. It's just harder on your body and you're having your cleat your cleats or your toe shoes or whatever like for a long you're on your feet for a long time. So knowing that you just get to come out and play one game and go all out in that one game is a big difference for these athletes for sure. The double header teams at AUX struggled yes, mightily. Maybe it was that internal dread of the double header. I appreciate your honesty up here. Yeah. <laughs> Sis Bates, a fan favorite. There's a chant right now for Let's Go, Let's Go Sis. There's signs in the crowd. She is always highly sought after in the autograph line after the games. Yeah, she's been a fan favorite since she was at Washington. It's a great following. A lot of the young little girls like to look up to her. Sis had four hits and eight chances in Dublin. The WBSC World Cup qualifier, Team USA, went 4-0, qualified for the World Cup next summer, 2024, in Italy. She's locked in. <laughs> Outside from Denham, just trying to dial it in right now. Fourth three ball count that we've seen from her in these first two innings. You can tell she has so much spin, Denham does, and right now she's just trying to control that spin, trying to find that consistent release point. Sis Bates, Ertez could not get back to the base to get Gibson, but that's a big out number two right there. Center fielder. <laughs> Yeah, right place, right time for Anissa Ertez and for Sis Bates. She hits it right at Ertez. No chance to turn two. That ball got on her so quickly, and Danielle Gibson did a good job of freezing on a line drive, not straying too far off a second base. Back to the top of the order, Haley McClenney. Watches that one upstairs from Denham. McClenney as consistent as they come. Top 12 in all five seasons that she has participated in. Three championship seasons, two AUX seasons. Highest finish was third. That's the last championship season. Fifth in 2020. Seventh at AUX this summer. A lot of the athletes I talked to, you know, I asked them, what did you do in the past few weeks between the AUX season and this season? And a lot of them talked to me about recovery, including Haley McClenney. She said she didn't work on anything specifically. Her goal was just to recover and take care of her body and also just to spend as much time at home as possible, knowing that she would be gone for six weeks here this season. Outside ball three. Did and she, she did bring Mac? Yeah. That's the question. Also in this text message is a picture of Mac, her puppy, and just the cutest nose ever. Absolutely. And I, that was my comment back to the picture, too. That's <laughs> the cutest nose ever. <laughs> Hard-hitting stuff from Amanda Scarborough in the booth right now. Can't talk to Haley without checking on Mac, That's for sure. sure. She's happy to talk about him at all times. Battling here with Alyssa Denham. Big at bat, two runners on, two outs. Tie and run at second base. If you're new to Athletes Unlimited, there are points on the line every at bat, every inning. McClenney, ground ball up the middle. Around comes Gibson, and that's going to tie the game. That goes off of Wiz at third, but flipping able to corral it. McClenney does advance to second, though. The captain delivering. It's 
all about the pitch location and why Haley McClenney was able to sit back on this changeup. Denim decided to go off speed and drop it down to 50 miles an hour, but it was just too up in the zone. You see Svek is set up on the outside corner, but look how she keeps her barrel on top of that pitch, trying to get the top of it not to pop this up, slaps it the other way and scores a run for her own team. Denim bounces back on the outside corner to start off Victoria Hayward. Even more danger now. Two runners in scoring position for the longtime pro out of Washington. New assistant coach for Heather Tarr, named this summer, moving over from San Diego State, where she was the associate head coach for Stacy Newman Denise. What a program that has been, especially recently, making their first ever super regional appearance this year. And this is outside ball two. Of course, Oklahoma, the dominant force in college softball. Do you feel like, though, as far as the country goes, that you're seeing just more talent starting to pop up, more programs starting to have success as a whole? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that when one team rises, everybody else has to rise up and start to do things a little bit differently. You just you want to compete in everything, right? When you see one team starting to win a lot, you start to take a look at your own program or maybe what they're doing, try to copy it a little bit. So it just ends up making every everything better as Victoria Hayward walks. Eight points for Hayward. Denim in trouble here. Bases loaded with two away. Hayward has 16 off three passes in this first game. Speckus and Flippin talking to her. The whole infield gonna come in real quick as Mia Davidson steps to the plate. The all-time leader in the history of the Southeastern Conference with 92 home runs. For every run scored during this year's Athletes Unlimited softball season, Aspiration committed to planting 10 trees. Stay tuned throughout the year to see how many trees will be planted thanks to Aspiration's support. Mia Davidson, five home runs in a shortened AUX season. Eight runs batted in, 12 runs scored. She planted plenty on her own, 200 of them, <laughs> thanks to Mia Davidson. Yeah, her goal during the AUX season was to finish higher than her previous season, which was the championship season back in 2022. And she definitely did that by finishing third in AUX. And so now if she wants to finish higher in the championship season, she's either going to finish one or two. Not <laughs> so, bad. Not a lot of wiggle room when you have such a great AUX season the way that Mia Davidson did. Got the third place medal now to her name. Aubrey Leach finished second. They were on the same team that final week. And then Rachel Garcia in first place. Davidson and Leach were hoping for their chance on the final day of the season, but the elements had other ideas. Poor air quality in the Chicago area forced the season to be well, closed down a little bit early. Didn't play those final two games took one of the games off the list to even things out between all the players, and that's how we finished up. Rachel Garcia did have a sizable lead, but it would have been the double header day for Aubrey Leach and Mia Davidson, so you never know. Aubrey Leach told me this week, yeah, I would have liked a chance, but it would have been real tough. They sat around for about five hours with the delay. I think they're both hungry. Mia Davidson yes. and Aubrey Leach, along with a lot of other players. I think everybody is hungry. The way that we finished the AUX season with the intensity yep. is the way that I feel like we're starting this game already. It feels more intense. Davidson, left field. Did she do it? She did! A grand slam! Sleeps. We're used to 
seen some bigger Mia bombs too, and that just shows you how strong Mia Davidson is with that grand slam. This pitch is down. See how Svekis wanted it on the outside corner. It bleeds back over in the middle of the plate. She goes down and gets it. That just barely snuck over. It's 210 out to left field. That went, what, about 217, 220, but doesn't matter. It's still worth 40 points and lots of runs on the board for Team McClenney. Davidson behind Sis Bates and Georgina Corrick who are dancing there at the steps of Team McClenney who is out to a great start. Romero, opposite field, off the fence and gets away from Pian Castelli. Romero is gonna be in the third with a triple. 30 more for Sierra Romero. Team McClenney just feeling it at the plate right now with their pitch selection, their timing, what they're looking for. Romero crushed this ball, and Erica Piancastelli had to play against the wind and the angle that the ball was going. But Romero thinking extra bases all the way, sees Piancastelli fall, and is thinking three on that. A triple and 30 points for Sierra Romero. Returned last summer after a knee injury. Came out hot at AUX, and Sierra Romero looking really good to start this championship season. Pitching change coming, we'll be right back. Not the start Alyssa Denham's wanted after a tremendous championship season last summer. It's been so good in Japan this year, but a tough start for her and enter Odyssey Alexander in her third year out of James Madison. Made one start at AUX, went five and two thirds, got out of multiple bases loaded jams. One of those on re-entry. Just looking for one out here in the second to get her team back at the plate. I think this is a big opportunity for Odyssey Alexander because when you enter a game, you're down six to two, really not, not as much pressure. You can go out and throw loose. Sam Fisher, the first batter she will face. Down in the dugout, Savannah is with Mia Davidson, who she's becoming very familiar with. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mia, we've stopped on these steps right here and talked about home runs multiple times throughout AUX, yeah. but never a grand slam. No, that's that's the one for the books, I guess, you know? <laughs> Just like going out there and making an adjustment from the last at bat and keep staying calm, trying not to do too much, and it worked out in my favor, so yeah. I know you got a little two-out rally going, but you got to get locked in to go in there and catch. Appreciate you, Mia. Oh, yeah, thank you, Savannah. Back to y'all. Uh, Mia Davidson. She is just tremendous. GA for Sam Ricketts at Mississippi State this past season where she was an absolute superstar. Helped them upset Florida State the previous year. The number two team in the country. 
has her team up six to two right now. Sierra Romero followed the grand slam up with a triple. And now Sam Fisher trying to bring her across. It's gonna go into the stands. Souvenir. It's still early and Odyssey Alexander's outing. She's only thrown five pitches, but I'm super impressed with the way that she looks in those five pitches. Threw up and in a rise ball to Sam Fisher. That's one of the best rise balls I've seen Odyssey Alexander throw in a while. Throwing with good velocity, change speeds with an off-speed curveball in that last pitch. Odyssey is one of those players when you talk to her, when you watch her, you just expect good things to happen. I think it's just the confidence that she exudes at all times. But like you said, a big chance for her to get off to a good start and give herself more opportunities as this young season goes on. Yes. Like you don't like it, throw it in. I watched the play today. I heard your call of Odyssey oh, Alexander in the uh, Women's College World Series. I was just doing some research, yeah. looking up some great yeah. plays, and ended up in a rabbit hole and watching Odyssey Alexander make that play from uh, about 20 different angles. It was so good. I could not believe it. I was watching that play live in Oklahoma City. Ooh, Sam Fisher fouled that off her leg, I think. Looks like she's all right. Uh, hard and yeah. that, that is, I believe, a mark. And I don't know. You know, Sam Fisher is pretty open on social media. I bet if it leaves a big bruise, we'll, we'll probably see, it, see yeah. it on social somewhere. Right on the knee. Three, two. Fisher stays with it. Zirkel goes over and makes the catch in center for the third out. Mia Davidson making her mark on opening day. And Team McClenny scores five this inning, and four of the runs came off of this swing by Mia Davidson. She is known for the long ball. Usually they go a little bit further than that, but I'm pretty sure Mia Davidson will take that grand slam. Athletes Unlimited Softball on ESPN is sponsored by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. Uh, behind the scenes at Media Day here at Athletes Unlimited, some of the rookies being featured along with Jasmine Jackson, Frankie Hamoudi, Gwen Speckis. Everybody ready for this championship season and what a start it's been. Somewhat similar to AUX with the bats making their mark. We've seen the long ball a couple times in this one. Amanda Lorenz, Mia Davidson, Sierra Romero, a double and a triple to start off her season. 
Am I just completely oblivious that I didn't notice during the AUX season that the flags in left center field had the captain's names on them? I just saw Team Rhodes on there flying through the air, and the four flags are all the, the captains. I don't, I don't think they did at AUX. Okay. I think that's a championship season touch. Okay, I like that. I like it, too. It looks good. Yeah. Pola, Denna, McClenny, and Rhodes. You get to take that home. <laughs> yeah. I'm not certain on that. <laughs> uh, I don't Stick know what right wall that would yard. In. <laughs> in the front yard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Sanders didn't play at AUX. She's had three top 15 finishes in the three championship seasons she has played in. Down 1-2 to Megan Faremo. She just finished her first season as an assistant coach at Memphis. And head coach Stephanie Van Brakel Prothrow, the former Alabama great as a player, and then as a longtime assistant coach. 2 2 from Faremo. Got some big help from her offense, and a long time to sit in there and make some adjustments, maybe in the circle, to try and get in a rhythm here in the second. And you know that your offense is showing up for you. Always a good feeling to help you get more comfortable in the circle and locate a little bit better. Swing and a miss. Like that. First of the season for Faremo after a tremendous World Cup qualifier. Our next ESPN WNBA game features an East Coast West Coast matchup between Brianna Stewart and the Liberty. They're taking on the Sparks Sunday afternoon, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. Coverage tips with WNBA countdown at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Megan Faremo stands at about six foot, six foot one. I'm telling you, she looks like she should be playing in the WNBA. I mean, she is that athletic. She's one just misses. Really athletic and a hard worker, likes to work out. Fun fact about her, too, is that she worked at FedEx as a package handler during the pandemic. And the best players in the country <laughs> picking up some extra work there during the pandemic. Yeah, that, de that definitely was a hidden secret yeah. um, when she finished the rest of her college days at UCLA, because we definitely didn't get a hold of that good nugget in the media working with ESPN. That's a good Athletes Unlimited trivia question. I know. <laughs> Which player worked at FedEx during the pandemic? Here's Josie Muffley, the rookie out of Florida State. Couple ACC titles the last two years. Runners up to Oklahoma, Women's College World Series final. Josie can swing it, but she's really known for her defense. Some tremendous plays, and I saw Florida State softball Twitter trying to manifest a Muffley Warren infield this season. I would love to see it personally. Jesse Warren, the defensive MVP of AUX, and then Josie Muffley, who is just electric defensively. Ground ball right side to Becker, who makes the play for the second out. First professional at bat in the bag. Makes way for the nine hole Morgan Zirkel. New head coach at her alma mater, Marshall. That was announced the final week of AUX. Since then, she has finalized her coaching staff. The only one not here is Allison Rager. She was a facilitator at AUX, and Morgan Circle has a history. Knew Allison before that. But she is on the staff currently in California recruiting. The other two, Allie Harrell, a former Marshall great as well, and then Sydney McKinney. The rookie from Wichita State, Faremo, goes one, two, three, and secures the 10 inning win points for Team McClenny. Megan Faremo trying to get in a groove here on opening day.
Team McClenny leading Team Denham 6-2 as we go to the third. Let's go into the game with Air National Guard. Yeah, Barbie! Yeah, Barbie! Hey, good spot to be here. Good spot to be. Drum ball, we get two. No. I know you will. I'm not worried about it. Listen, you're the best. You're getting them to swing and miss at your stuff. Yeah. Just trust your stuff. You're the best out here. You got this, Liz. And we got you. Give it to me. Here we go. Hi. Are you okay? Okay. Can you play in front of me? I'm scared. This is the worst. That's Anna Flippin mic'd up for us today as Danielle Gibson swings through the first one from Odyssey Alexander. How about Hannah Flippin? I mean, you're talking about one of the best players in the world right now, one of the hottest players in the world, certainly. Yeah, and I just love the communication with Alyssa Denham earlier on when she was having a harder time, just making her feel good, knowing the right thing to say. And I want to play next to Hannah Flippin. I want her to be, can she come up here in the booth with us and just make me feel good up here? I mean, Hannah Flippin is just so awesome defensively as a teammate at the plate with the numbers that she's put up. This hit down the left field line. Fair, perfectly placed by Gibson. She's gonna coast into second. Grounded it, but is gonna stay there with a double. That's 20 points for Danielle Gibson. She's reached both times. Yeah, this team, McClenny, is seeing the ball big in this first game. Well, we have Hannah Flippin mic'd up, and she is going to chat with us here. Back. Hannah, welcome back to Athletes Unlimited. It's been a busy year for you, and you're coming off a really good performance at the World Cup qualifiers. How do you feel right now? Oh, I feel so great. It feels like I'm home. It has been a crazy year, but uh, this always feels comfortable and feels like I'm right at home. Yeah, CC. Hannah, what's it like to play the hot corner against these right-handed hitters with so much power? Oh, it's just my favorite. I love <laughs> being over here. No, I mean, it's fun. It's a new challenge. I've played this game for so long, and it's fun to be challenged in a new way. And um, But, yeah, these hitters are no joke. And then you have people like Gibby who will show a drag bun, and it's like, wait, you just hit a double, and then you're going to drag bun? That doesn't seem fair. But they might say the same thing about me. So, But it's fun. It's fun to be challenged in a new way in the sport that I've played my whole life. Tell us about your partner over there on the left side of the infield. I'm assuming there's a pretty good familiarity there with Anissa Ortez from your days at Utah. Yeah, I'm used to being on her left side. So uh, <laughs> this is a fun experience, though. I mean, me and Anissa have played together for so long, and it feels like we can read each other's minds, and we just know what each other's thinking. Um, but it's been an awesome experience playing with her through college, against her internationally, and then on the same team here this weekend is uh, it feels really good. It's fun. And I'm sure it was fun to follow Utah's season uh, this past college softball season. How would you describe what you saw from your alma mater? Oh, my gosh. It's so fun watching them. I mean, I was heartbroken because I was in Japan so far away, and all I had to do was, like, watch on my little laptop screen. So I wish so bad that I could have been there for that experience because they just, like, put Utah on the map, and they showed everybody in this world that Utah is a contender in the softball world. They were gritty, they were tenacious, they were aggressive. Yeah, Odyssey! They just did what they knew how to do. Hannah, we talked about Alyssa Denham. She didn't have a great start today, but we talked about some of the players that as you've gone away from college have elevated your game to such an incredible level. You're one of those players that we just see, it seems like continuing to get better and better. What do you attribute your success to as your career has gone on? Oh, I attribute my success to being open to learning. I'm lucky enough to have played on the USA team this summer, surrounded by four coaches that I don't really get to spend a lot of time with, and I just eat up everything they say. And then I play with people that are, play at such a high level, and I just eat up everything they say and um, never feel like I know it all, because I don't. I mean, I'm playing third base. I've played this a handful of times, but I'm asking Kelsey what her experience is. I'm asking. Uh, Delaney Wiz, like just trying to gain all the knowledge I can and put it into my own game. You make me want to put a uniform on and just come and be your teammate. I don't know if you heard me say that come earlier before we started talking to you, but 
Um, you're awesome. Last question for us, and then we'll just kind of give a little listen into your sure. communication on the field. But wh what's your advice for the rookies that are playing this season? My advice for the rookies is it doesn't matter where you get drafted. You can still end up in the top 10 on the leaderboard, whether you're drafted first or last. So I was having a conversation with my roommate, Morgan Zirkel, and typically she gets drafted after me. But in the last like three or five seasons, she always finishes higher than me on the leaderboard. Um, so I'd say don't let your draft number uh, dictate how you feel or how you play. It's nothing personal. Usually it's all strategy. Um, and then just play the game that you know how to play. It's softball, nothing's changed. It's still the same game that they just came from and just have fun doing it. Hannah, you are the best. Thank you so much Thanks, for your time. We're just gonna listen in now. All right, cool. Job, Odyssey. Nice. If she stands, I'm gonna stay back. If she runs through, I'm charge. Two for you, Odyssey, way to be. Yeah, three. Yeah, Glenn. Here you go. Good job. Trying to figure out how to play Sis Bates like at the it. plate right it, now. Yeah, three. And two looking strikeouts. Yeah, Glenn, back here to go. back for Odyssey Alexander, too. Setting up her pitch as well. Yeah, CC, here you go. Good, yes. That's so good, three. So good. Using every inch of that zone on, on the first two one. strikeouts. Yeah, three. Yeah, Odyssey, hunt out. Yeah, Gwen. Yes. The way that these like pitchers like can just it. pitch with good so job. much confidence, knowing the defense that they Keep have back three. behind them, so good. can throw strikes. You yeah, know yeah, that you can that. challenge hitters because even if you make a mistake, you have such a good defense back yeah, behind three. you. Here like you kind of flip in, Anissa Ortez, Josie Muffley over at second base, base, the rookie. They'll make plays for you. Good job, two for you. Strike two on the foul two ball for Sis Bates. Good job. Be so and it's flipping been playing in her second season in Dolphins Japan. Team. So you might be number one in this. That league takes a break, basically for yeah, international play. Go. And then yeah, it works three. out yeah, three. that players like Flippin and Alyssa Denham and a number I of others Keep spreading it. Yeah, can three. play Athletes Unlimited yeah, as well. One. Two, two. Odyssey, Odyssey, Odyssey. And that'll do it. A leadoff double for Danielle Gibson, then three straight retired for Odyssey Alexander. And a big thank you to Hannah Flippin for letting us talk to her during the game. Ten points on the line, going to the bottom of the third. Team Denham trailing Team McClenney 6-2. Well, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball has the series finale between the Yankees and the AL East leading Orioles at Camden Yards in Baltimore. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. The AL East leading Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, when's the last time that we said that? It's been a while. 
They're up by a game and a half over the Rays. You, you know who's not leading their division? No, the I Kansas don't know. City I Royals. Oh, <laughs> they're going to say the Astros. Well, I, I could have got you there. I'll, I'll poke fun at myself <laughs> first. <laughs> Amanda Lorenz earlier. Back in her first at bat to lead off Team Denim's offensive inning. Crush that ball off of Megan Carimo. <laughs> Went 272 feet, 89 mile per hour exit velocity, and that is just no doubter. Second pitch you saw looking for that side of the plate. Ramo has retired four straight. The double play to end the first. Struck out DJ Sanders and then a couple ground outs of Muffley and Zirkel. Now back to the top of that order here in the bottom of the third. Loren slaps it foul down the left field line. My expectation for this game was low scoring. Was yes. a pitcher's duel. We haven't quite seen that, but Faramo maybe can get in a groove. Were, were you thinking the same thing? I thought great pitching matchup yeah, for sure. I really was. And then they scored in back to back to back half innings, but now we've had back to back zeros put up. So maybe we're just turning the tides in this game. Lorenz, tough play for Faramo. And Lorenz safe. A swinging bunt single there for Amanda Lorenz. <laughs> Ten more points for her. Well, everybody loves to rep Athletes Unlimited. You can too. Be sure to check out the new AU softball merch for this season, including personalized player tees. Go to shop.auprosports.com to get yours today. Pointed that out when we walked in today. I said, hey, they got some new gear over there. That's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, it looks good. Kelsey Stewart Hunter. Big day for her. About three hours before first pitch. Ohio State softball announced that Kelsey Stewart Hunter would be joining their staff as the newest assistant coach. Big congratulations to her. She's from Wichita, Kansas. Played her college ball at Florida, where she was exceptional. Back-to-back -back national champion in 2014 and 2015. And the 2015 SEC Player of the Year. She brings a ton of experience and knowledge with her to that program. Florida, where she won those two national championships you mentioned, and of course, competing in the Olympics with Team USA, winning the silver. Handful of Gators here at Athletes Unlimited. Tim Walton has had some good ones. One of them will move to second while Stuart Hunter grounds out to first. One out. I'm sure Amanda Lorenz loves being on Team Denna. Their team name, I believe, is Team Barbie. You know, they have a name for every team. It is Team McClenny or Team Denim, but it's Team Barbie, and Amanda Lorenz loves to wear pink, so I feel like that team name is just right up her alley and possibly even could have been her idea. Okay. Are you on board? you like that name? Yeah, I like that yeah. name, and you think about Alyssa Denim. She's tall, blonde. Like, I feel like it just all comes together, yep. and there's, like, some pink feathers in the third base dugout, too. Just... Yeah. Very on brand there. You're repping the movie release. You've got the pink <laughs> shirt on tonight. Ortez stabbed by Fisher. What a play for out number two. Man, that got on her so quickly. Ortez crushed this ball 75 miles an hour right at Sam Fisher, who read it perfectly. Not scared at all, fearlessly playing third base and robs Ortez of a hit. She'll joke about that one, too. I mean, we'll hear about that as well when we get Sam Fisher mic'd up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> First pitch strike to Hannah Flippin.
Turpin wearing number 19, said her family all watches the Padres. Their favorite player was Tony Gwynn, the legend, the late legend. It's in Dublin, with Team USA. They went 4-0. She was the most outstanding player for their group. She said there isn't a softball field in Ireland, so they played on a rugby field. And those fields are turf, so they took tarps, put a tarp in the pitcher's circle, covered it with dirt, and did the same for the batter's box. Yeah, international softball can be a bit of an adventure sometimes. <laughs> Team USA got the job done. All teams represented by an Athletes Unlimited player qualified for the World Cup in 2024, except for one. It was Great Britain, and Georgina Korik was exceptional for them. She's the only one that plays on that team from Athletes Unlimited. She was outstanding, but they did not qualify for the WBSC World Cup in 2024. Yeah, how tough is that, that her ERA for the tournament, Korik's was like, 054. 40 strikeouts in 26 innings for Georgina Korik. Yeah. A five inning perfect game against Ireland where she struck out nine. Struck out 14 in their lone loss to Australia. As Fisher takes care of that one. Another play for Sam Fisher. Paramo starting to heat up here. For Team McClenney. We're going to compete, you're going to believe in each other, we're going to have a really good time, and we're not going to take things too seriously. Softball is about fun, it's also about people, um, but yeah, fun, fun, competitive, and believing in each other. Well, Haley McClenney knows the recipe because she has been outstanding on the leaderboard individually as far as stat points go. She's really impressive, great perspective on the game as well. Yeah, she's always been a pro's pro so passionate about growing the professional game and about helping those around her that she's teammates with, or maybe even not teammates with, from week to week, help them grow too. Gives back to others. Let's see, Alexander has retired four of five batters that she has faced since replacing Alyssa Denham in the second inning. Is that one in there to Gwen Svekas. <laughs> Talked about McClenney's team being very defense minded. Her first two picks were pitchers, Faremo and Corrick, and Odyssey lets that one go as well. And a big smile on her face right now. Trying to find the 
middle area between those last two. She's always smiling. Like it doesn't matter <laughs> what's happening. She's so fun to be around. Big personality. The heat we talked about around 90 degrees. There is a breeze. There was some cloud cover. We'll talk about that in a second. Another big weekend of lacrosse, though, featuring the Water Dogs and the Archers on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. That's followed by the Whip Snakes and Chaos, only on ESPN+, Plus, live from the Ford Center, the Dallas Cowboys' 12,000-seat indoor practice facility in Frisco, Texas. Those are some names yeah. in the Premier League lacrosse. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse also on ESPN. Those games have been outstanding. I was watching that the other day. Victoria Hayward, a pair of walks to her name. Yeah, team Denim has thrown a lot of pitches. Go back to Melissa Denim's start and the amount of free passes that she had, walks, hit by pitch. In fact, three of those free passes came around to score the six runs that are on the board for Team McClenney. Odyssey ahead, one, two. Grits her teeth there, still having a little bit of issues gripping the ball, maybe? Yeah, uh, not sure, just not as good of command this inning, for sure. The first inning that she came in when she entered the game, back in the top of the, s the second, she looked good. Top of the third, looked good too. A couple of looking strikeouts that she had. That one runs outside. Victoria Hayward bouncing back to make it a full count. She's out there using rosin too. Could be slipping out of her hand, but she <laughs> she looked good in an inning to go. So could be a different ball too. You know, each softball feels a little bit different. Maybe one is a little bit newer than the other one. You see her actually throw back the ball that the umpire just gave to her after she got a grip on it. And she's maybe laughing at herself too for being a little picky, but that's just how pitchers are. So you just roll with it especially when you're trying to find that command. You want a softball that you feel like you can grip and throw for a strike. That's the 20th pitch Victoria Hayward has seen in her three at bats. She has swung at four of them and walked three times. <laughs> Twenty-four points on three walks for Hayward. And here's Mia Davidson. A grand slam in the second. Here it is. And that pitch is bled back over the plate, and it was low. It just wasn't located on a corner whatsoever, and it snuck over the left field wall. Three happened to be on base for that swing, so that was a big grand slam in the top of the second inning for Team McClenney when they scored those five runs. 76 miles an hour off the bat. She loves who she's hitting behind in this Team McClenney order. How about McClenney and Hayward combined one for one, five walks, and three runs scored so far? Yeah, 1,000 on base percentage. I mean, that's exactly what you want to see out of your one and two hole, finding a way to get on base, good pitch selection, just setting things up for your big power hitters to drive you in. Big cut from Davidson. <laughs> Honestly, he's thrown a couple of those rise balls that she's gotten some good swings and misses on. Right-handed hitters up and in. Big swings. One by Sam Fisher and then that one by Mia. That one right back to that zone. pitch. Yeah, just a little bit lower. 
There is a pitch clock at Athletes Unlimited implemented in the AUX softball season. 15 seconds, the hitters have to keep their feet one foot in the box, except in the event of a foul ball, then they can step out. I love it, I'm such a fan of that, just to keep the game moving. I like it's past probably 10 years or so, the game just started to slow down in between pitches, a lot of timeouts called, a lot of gamesmanship that's been going on at different levels. We've seen the MLB make the same change, which has significantly cut their game times down. It went from over three hours yep. to just about two and a half hours. It yep. cut it down by 30 minutes. There's that pitch clock right there. 15 seconds moves now. It goes quick, too. Keeps the fans, though, engaged more, too. 3-2. It's popped up foul. How would you do with the pitch clock? Any problems? Were you slow? Oh, no, I worked, I worked pretty quickly. Okay. I was ready to just get to the next pitch. Didn't want to think about the last one for too long, for better or for worse. Well, to your credit, most of them were good. I mean, <laughs> worked out pretty well. Uh. Ooh, off the handle. Good pitch location, too, trying to work her up and in on the hands. I see Alexander throwing 45 pitches, and she's not even pitched two innings in this game. That's what Ely McClenney, Victoria Hayward will do to you, and then Mia Davidson doing her best impersonation of them as well right here with a great at bat. So Team McClenney has seen 95 pitches in this game, and we are just in the top of the fourth inning. So they've been working the count, good pitch selection. Ninth to Davidson, oh. and got her. Odyssey does not like it. Davidson kind of turned. We'll have to take a look at it, but Odyssey Alexander and Gwen Svekis disagreeing with that. to home plate umpire Don Brown. See that location of this pitch and moves into it, but it's not, you know, purposeful. It's just her starting her swing where not moving out of the way of that pitch. They just continue to run up and in her hands. I think that about half that ball was in the batter's box, what it looked like to me. But I think Odyssey Alexander is maybe saying that that pitch was in the river or maybe even from her view, she thought that it was within the strike zone too. A couple of different possibilities, all about the pitch location there and what the hitter needs to do. This is not who she wants to see with the bases loaded. Sierra Romero having a night right now. Oh, and she wanted that one, too. First pitch swinging. <laughs> She's getting these righties with that rise ball. That is a good pitch for her right now. Just needs to find that put-away pitch in this inning. She's got a little smile on her face after that swing, too. Oh, one to Romero. That's into the stands. Second season of Athletes Unlimited hit 409 at AUX last summer after returning from that knee injury. A former number two overall pick back in the 2016 NPF draft. Her career numbers at Michigan are ridiculous. 441 career average, 82 home runs, 305 runs driven in. It is absurd. Well, you know she wants to hit like that here. I mean, it's going to be almost impossible to make those exact same numbers here <laughs> with the pitching that we have in this league. But last championship season only hit 238, just that one home run that she had that season. She's capable of big RBI numbers. She's had three RBI, too. But I'm sure she wants to start out this season hot. And another hit here, making it three for three, would definitely spark that fire. 
Fought back 2-2 after falling behind 0-2. Down and away. There's still nobody out in this inning. Yeah. And all the base runners are there for three passes, two walks, and then a hit by pitch. Gotten herself in quite a bit of trouble, just not having the same command in this inning. Odyssey got out of two bases loaded jams with less than two outs in her lone start at AUX. Walks Romero, and McClenney will come in. Eight more points there for Sierra, who's having a big start. 58 stat points for her so far tonight. Odyssey has thrown 52 pitchers. And in steps number 52, Sam Fisher. McClenney scoring right there. That's all three times she's come to the plate. She has come across the plate. It's mm -hmm. a good leadoff hitter right there. And you can tell that Odyssey is just trying to find something to throw for a strike. When these hitters aren't helping her out, she's not locating getting called strikes. Fisher off the end of the bat. Ortez into shallow left. Gosh, that's a huge out. She needed that so bad, and she needed a hitter to help her out like that. Went off speed, got Fisher out in front of it, off the end of her bat. Easy fly out. Desperately needed to get an out of the board. Doesn't get any easier. Danielle Gibson, six doubles at AUX, tied for the league lead with Amanda Lorenz. She had 14 hits. For the longest time, her and Tori Vidalis were the only two who had a hit in every game. Gibson ended up missing one. Vidalis completed the season with a hit in every game. That was the 30th pitch of the inning from Alexander. You said it, location has been the prime issue here in the fourth. For Danielle Gibson, it was an eventful month off season between AUX and the championship season. She was at Georgia as a volunteer assistant this past season under Tony Baldwin. It was announced July 14th she would be returning to her alma mater, Arkansas, to be an assistant coach under Courtney Dyfel. Telling you, that is the theme this summer is return home <laughs> for coaches and for players too, whether some players are in the transfer portal returning back home or coaches. Nice stop by Gwen Svekis. Made that look so easy and it's just not, especially she's set up on the inside corner for that and it goes in the right-handed batter's box on the ground. Good pick. Two, two. Gibson fighting. Gibson to Arkansas. Kelsey Stewart Hunter over at first base, going to Ohio State. Victoria Hayward on third base. Back to her alma mater, Washington. The list goes on. I'm just looking around the field yeah. right now, looking for the other ones. Morgan Zirkel Morgan back Zirkel. to Marshall. She's the head coach there now. Allie Harrell. Allie Harrell returns with her. Sis Bates back to Washington. Coaching moves in general in this league for players <laughs> seems to you. be the, the story for sure. Uh, you know, I had said that, I think, in the middle of June. The, it's the theme, return home, but it just continues to go over and over again. I think Jordy Ball started it. Gibson lost this one into left field. Tailing toward foul territory, Lorenz has it, but Hayward will score. A sack fly there for Danielle Gibson. That's worth 10 points for her. Good start. The second year player out of Arkansas. Yeah, Team McClenney trying to win these inning points. Helps to get that insurance run, not having just scored one run this inning, but two. 20 points on the line because of the rollover from the third inning where no one scored. And if you're new to Athletes Unlimited, 
It is an individual leaderboard, but much of the success, if you are not winning, you will not be at the top. I think it's easy to have a misconception about the AU leaderboard and think, oh, because you're piling up individual points, that maybe those are more important, but you'll hear these players say, team points are the most important. Ertez back, Lorenz calls off Ertez. Nice communication out there for out number three. The damage limited to just two, but those 20 inning win points on the line. Team Denim needs them. Two, Team McClenny leading Team Denim. Five runs in the second, Amia Davidson Grand Slam, and a lot on the line here in the bottom of the fourth for Team Denim. 20 inning win points. Well, athletes Unlimited and Tops have unveiled the first ever set of player trading cards that feature all four Athletes Unlimited sports combined in one set. This was Thursday over at the National Sports Collectors Convention. Some of the players over there signing their cards, trading those cards, really exciting. There's a 200 card set. It features 185 athletes from the 2022 seasons, and it's available at Target, Barnes & Noble, Hobby Shops, and through tops.com and fanatics.com. Submit your set today. We were opening some up here in the booth. Well, okay, you got a special one. What was it? Yeah, so I got an Isabel Harrison signed tops card. She plays basketball in AU and has a huge, massive social media following too. Like I was excited when I first saw it, knowing that it was something different. But then looking her up on social media, I'm like, wow, that, that really is a good card. Absolutely. I'm super jealous too. Th these are so cool. The opening packs reminds me of like going back to where packs of cards reminds me of going back to when I was like nine, 10, collecting cards myself. And to see female athletes on cards like this, when I opened up MLB, NFL, and NBA cards, really more so MLB, but to see players that I know, that I'm friends with, and that I follow, I mean, just so cool. And they, they have that card smell oh, too. Gosh. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Bianca Stelli through the 5-6 hole. She's aboard her second base hit of the season. That smell, though, I had forgotten about that, Chucky, until I just kind of held it up a little closer to my nose, and I'm like, oh, it's all coming back to me now. But these are fresh. The photos look great because Jade Hewitt is just an absolute master behind all of the media for Athletes Unlimited. You staff did a great job setting that up yesterday getting the players out there and a really special event rosemont is buzzing with that going on it's packed around here we even saw johnny manzel at dinner last night and you didn't talk to him you got the a m <laughs> connection i thought you were gonna at least throw up the money sign on the way out the door but nothing just let him have his piece okay Zvekis. Is this going to stay? It will not. It's going to be foul. 
She grounded into a double play her first trip up. Definitely has the big swing though. Hit three home runs last championship season. You know, I'd love to see the crowd that we have on this Friday night. It's going to be a big weekend, opening weekend, and see a lot of softball fans, but also a lot of young softball players in the stands who get to look up to these athletes. But also really cool is to see the young baseball players that are in the stands too. Anywhere between 5 and 16 years old that you're seeing some of these baseball players. Smekis goes the other way. Pianca Stelli up to second. And there's two aboard with nobody out. They need two to roll over those inning win points. So the perfect start against Faremo, who was rolling. It's the young athletes, both boys and girls, in the autograph lines. It's not specific. Everybody wants the autographs after the games. Everybody wants the trading cards. Big chance here for DJ Sanders. Nice off speed there from Faremo for strike one. Yeah, I haven't seen her use that pitch all that much. I'm sure saving it for as long as she possibly could and after giving up back-to-back -back hits to start off this inning, it's a good time to throw it in there. And they go hard in, love that. Change up for the called strike and then hard in with the screwball right at the knees, brushing DJ Sanders back off the plate. Two on, nobody out, 0-2. Off the handle back against the netting. I was going to say, go to a rise ball next. I think if she would have been able to locate that pitch a little bit more up in the zone, she maybe would have gotten a swing and miss. Another chance here. DJ making things difficult. Rookie Josie Muffley on deck. It'll be a big opportunity for her one way or another. For the bottom of this order for Team Denim, two runs is, are needed to roll these points over. Oh, we're talking about those tops trading cards. The one I was really excited about was Sierra Romero. We've got her in a chair chat right now. And Sierra, you have come out just on a tear right now at the plate. How are you feeling returning to the field? I feel great. Um, I did everything I needed to do in the off season, and um, I felt really prepared coming into this season. Worked really hard with my trainer, Thomas Summers, at Summers Method. Um, been using my app to make sure I stay on track, and it's been paying off. What does that prepara preparation look like for you? Obviously, last season, there was a lot of talk coming back from the knee injury. This year, you know, you had that year under your belt. Was it a different type of prep? Yeah. Um, I invested in a machine. Um, I think any softball player knows it's hard to find a place to train. So like I said, my trainer at Summers Method, it's been amazing to have that facility because I'll get there and I'll be there for three, four hours. I, lo I lose track of time. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just be there. It's just such a good energy, good vibe. And um, yeah, I just I kind of feel like last season in general was practice for me, just kind of getting comfortable playing softball again after not playing for three years. And now it's, it's kind of game on. Like I, I feel like I have a lot in me still and um, you know it's paying off and I'm really excited about it. Sierra update people just on you know your life and where you live these days and what you do outside of Athletes Unlimited what's life like? Wow life is crazy. <laughs> um, I live in St. Pete uh, Florida. Uh, I love St. Pete and I just came out with an app available on iPhone Android. Um, it's basically everything that I do <laughs> in the weight room uh, in the cages, on the field, you get my strength coach, myself instructing you, and it's literally what I'm doing every single day. Um, it's everything that I'm doing every single day. And um, it's 
at the end of the day with softball players and in the sport in general, it's all about consistency. Um, the people who perform and the people who are able to do it often. This is a tough sport. It's the people who are putting the work in every single day, not taking that time off, you know, knowing their body and just kind of getting after it. And um, it's been a lot of fun uh, getting into that side of the business. I was really lucky to be put in touch with Thomas Summers and he's been a good friend um, and a great business partner and it's been a lot of fun. That's so great to hear, Sierra. Before we let you go, I have to ask, how does the Romero family stay up to date on all the athletes? Sophia, Mikey, <laughs> yourself, and Sydney. Is there like a weekly Zoom to update everybody how things are going? What's going on? It's our family group chat, and it's all over the place. Like when I tell you, like I'll go on, and I don't even know. Sophia is getting ready to leave to Boise, so she's like getting all her dorm stuff together. And then it's Mikey is in, you know, Virginia, but then he's playing here, and then he just hits a double, and I'm like, I don't even know where he's at right now. <laughs> and then with Sid, it's like she's at Duke, and now she's going to Oregon, and um, I feel like I'm the only one kind of staying in place right now. They know I'm in Florida. Uh, but that's the only way we keep in touch. Even my parents, they got a podcast going. I mean, they're all they're all over the place. I'm just like, okay, you guys get after it. It's because they're empty nesters now. They're doing all the things they couldn't do when they had kids in the house. <laughs> that's right. It's hard to keep up for the Romero family, for, yes. us, for you guys, let alone for us. But thank you so much. We're so glad you're back. Thank you. Thanks, Sierra. Thanks. I mean, it is the season of the Romeros. It, it sounds like so much going on. I think it's partially been that season for a long time. They, yeah. they, they've been getting it done for a long time, and it looks like we will have a pitching change for Team McClenny. Mariah Masson is going to replace Megan Faramo here. The rookie, Josie Muffley, with an RBI single, making things interesting here in the fourth. We will be right back. Megan Faramo gave up a couple in the first and settled in for a while. A decent start, did give up seven hits over three and a third, but just two earned runs. She is responsible for those runners on first and second right now. She makes way for Mariah Masson in her second season. She's from Tulare, California, played her college ball at Oregon State, leading them to the Women's College World Series last year. And Masson will throw in the upper 60s. Very reliable drop ball that she'll work down in the zone, can spin the ball up too with her rise. Mariah, six innings, gave up five hits and two earned with three strikeouts in her lone win at AUX. She had a sub four ERA in her first two seasons, both of those last summer, the championship season and AUX. Pretty good spot, just misses outside. This is Morgan Zirkel. You can see Masson getting better and better as the AU, AUX season went on. Finished stronger than she started, for sure, trying to take that momentum into this new season. Popped up, Sis Bates waves off Fisher. Two outs. It's a big out right there, especially with runner in scoring position. Win these any points. And most of these players will tell you they don't watch the leaderboard because they think it would drive them crazy, basically, just becoming obsessed with it. But they do understand what's on the line. The one thing that's undeniable is the win points. You know how you're doing as a team. You see it on the scoreboard. You know 
what the makeup of Athletes Unlimited is, how the scoring works. So the one thing that you do hear them talking about is, hey, we got to have this inning. We have to have this whatever it is, especially when they start to roll over like they have right now. Masson trying to locate on the outside corner. I'd be really careful here with how Amanda Lorenz has seen the ball early this season. She has that monster home run and then almost a swinging bunt, the infield single that she got on her last AB. Got to be careful, and especially, too, you think about, okay, Amanda Lorenz up right now, Kelsey Stewart-Hunter on deck. She's 0 for 2. See how careful Masson is. 2-1. Upstairs, three and one. Are you letting her go right here? Yeah. I can tell she's just pitching her outside, trying to stay at the knees, a little bit off the plate. That was still supposed to be a screwball. Ended up rising up. She just held on to it a little bit too long. But no way I'm giving her anything to hit right here. And she didn't. Eight points for Lorenz. Bases Versus loaded. Seven. Number so the bat passes to Kelsey Stewart Hunter. 0 for 2, reached on an error and scored in the first. Hit just 174 at AUX. Popped up, Masson, did she get out of it? Fisher in foul territory makes the catch. That is big from Mariah Masson to secure the 20 inning win points and keep her team up by five. Eight three team McClenny leading team Denham. Less hits, but they've been getting on base in other ways. Also 30 of a possible 40 inning win points going team McClenny's way right now. They're looking to cruise here on opening day for team Denham. More changes in the circle. We've seen Alyssa Denham who started, went one and two thirds, then Odyssey Alexander coming in in relief. And now the longtime veteran, Haley Wagner from Orange, California, played her college ball at Michigan, just talked to one of her former college teammates in a chair chat, Sierra Romero, but still seeing some really bright spots from Haley Wagner, almost through a complete game, two run, just big win for a team at AUX, wasn't able to close that out, but she still got it. That, that was such a great game that she threw toward the end of the AUX season. And know that she probably wanted that, couldn't finish it, but clearly showing that she has this, the stuff to do it, go deep into a game. Big thing about her is that she'll give a different look coming from the left-hand side. Not a ton of left-handed pitchers in Athletes Unlimited, but Haley Wagner will bring in the mid to upper 60s, or more side to side with her curve and screw. 
Rachel Becker will lead it off for Team McClenny. You're noticing some different camera views right now. That is because lightning has moved within eight miles of Parkway Bank Sports Complex. Not close enough to shut us down yet, but as a precaution, we've taken our cameramen off of their post. And we'll just await potentially a decision as that storm front moves closer. But at the moment, all good, can still play. We don't want any interruptions on opening no, day, Amanda. Like, does the weather know what today is? Like, come on. Come on. Ground ball left side, flipping. Just casually on a jog to get Becker for the first out. Well, fans, you can secure a ticket to our virtual Summer Fan Fest. No rain delays on that. July 31st by joining the Unlimited Club. Hear from your favorite players, experience one-on-one -on -one meet and greets, giveaways, and more. Join now for just $20 a year at AUProSports.com slash membership. Sis Bates softly hit to Ertez, who takes care of it. They were teammates the final week at AUX. Sis moved over to shortstop. Ertez stayed at short defensive, or excuse me, Sis moved to second base while Ortez stayed at short. Two quick outs here for Wagner. It's interesting, as good as the hitters have been this summer, and last summer for that matter, we have only had one hitter be crowned champion. That's Deja Mulipola. Rachel Garcia, the first, or the second, I should say, two-way player to do it. Alicia Ocasio, also a two-way player. The first one was Kat Osterman, and then Danielle O'Toole was the first ever AUX champion last summer in San Diego. O'Toole retired at the end of the championship season last summer. A couple of left-handed pitchers there, and yeah. not a ton this season, but Kat Osterman and Danielle O'Toole both. Kat Osterman played just two seasons of Athletes Unlimited, but the if you look at the career leaders, as far as pitching goes, you would not be surprised to see her name on many of those, including first on the career strikeouts list for the championship season. Back to Wagner, and Haley Wagner, a one, two, three inning in relief, just 10 pitches for the veteran from Michigan, and it's all smiles for Team Denham right now. Okay, Eight three, Team McClenny leading Team Ladies Denham. Being set for the for bottom of the fifth, but play has been stopped due to lightning area. in the Here area. Parkway Bank Sports Complex, Bank Sports Complex not being so kind to us the last couple play. times, Amanda Scarborough. You're the, the bad luck, not me. I don't know about that. Well, our next ESPN WNBA game features an East Coast West Coast matchup between Brianna Stewart 
and the Liberty taking on the Sparks. That's Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Coverage tips with WNBA Countdown at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Not the start Team Denim wanted in this one. Team McClenney leading the way 8-3. to three. Alyssa Denham, who we've talked, raved about really how great she's been over the past year. Not the start she wanted. On the other side for Haley McClenney, it is the perfect start. She has been the perfect leadoff hitter. She's Amanda Scarborough. I'm Chucky Kempf. And your thoughts on this opening day, which has been postponed now by Lightning. I know. For, I'm just so bummed about that yeah. because opening day just has so much adrenaline running and such a buzz. Now to have a Lightning delay just kind of takes that down. But uh, the way that uh, Team McClenney's at bats have been going is what stood out to me the most by far, putting up those eight runs, putting things together. Well, Shannon Rhodes, one of the other captains, her first time as a captain. Deja Mulipola, last season's champion we've seen so many great storylines in this one hannah flippin returning she's playing some of her best ball and we are hopeful for a great season it has just been delayed at the moment mia davidson off off to a great start as well with a grand slam she's playing some of her best ball i think what we saw at the end of aux when we we're talking about what to expect this season the pitchers got better i mean i think everybody got better but it just continued to get more and more competitive, all in anticipation of this. Yeah, I think the level of play is already starting at a really high level for game one. And I can't imagine five weeks from now when we get through to the last series, how these athletes are going to be so prepared and intense wanting to win a championship. Three former champions in the building, Alicia Ocasio, Deja Mulipola, and Rachel Garcia, this past AUX champion see those the two championship season ones were Acasio and Muli Pola 60 players 12 of them rookies we saw Josie Muffley drive in a run just moments ago you see those colleges that are most represented I don't know that that's a huge surprise Florida in there with some of those veterans and then UCLA and Oklahoma no surprise there right yeah some blue bloods but I have to tell you, I love seeing the rookies come out and play because you might think that they're veterans and experience having just finished their college careers and been there, done that as seniors. And now they have to start all over again with being a rookie, almost being like a freshman again with a new league. So watching them get comfortable and play their game is always something I enjoy watching. Now that you've seen an AUX season, an Athletes Unlimited style season. You asked Hannah Flippin what she would tell rookies. What would you tell rookies about this league and how to go about it? I thought Hannah Flippin had some great advice and that was don't pay too much attention to where you get drafted and let that pull you down. Try to have that consistent mindset, not letting the external factors affect you. I just loved her advice and I feel like that's probably the best advice that you could give for a rookie. And just have fun too. Learn from as many veterans as you can. We would like to be having more fun, Savannah, but we're going to come down to you on the field while we've got this lightning delay. I know this is never what you want to see happen in opening weekend, especially with it being Tops weekend. There's been so much excitement here at the stadium. So not only is it Tops weekend here at Parkway Bank, but the 43rd National Sports Collectors Convention just so happens to be in Rosemont this year. It is the event for sports memorabilia, autographs, and trading cards. Yesterday after Athletes Unlimited stopped by with Tops to meet fans and sign autographs of their trading cards. Take a look. When I first saw myself on a Tops card, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Um, I didn't really own any growing up mainly because there was really only cards with men on them and I was a big um, female sports fan. So being able to be a woman in sports and be a woman on a top card, I think it's just so cool. Um, and it's so great for little girls to be able to have cards with us on them. It's often said that if you can't find it at the National, it probably doesn't exist, which makes it even more special that Athletes Unlimited is here, part of the biggest sports trading card event in the country. Well, that loud noise you hear behind me right now is for the weather delay that we're in. So I hope you can hear me nice and clear over it. But that event yesterday was unbelievable. I have never seen so, so many great sports memorabilia. It was awesome.
you got to go. Difficulties there with Savannah, but it really was an incredible event. We've seen it at the hotel. We've seen it all over Rosemont. So many people in town for this. You mentioned we saw Johnny Manziel. We assumed he was in town for that last night, but it's a big deal. You, you've you got some. I've, they're at home right now in my parent in my room at my parents' house. i got to get them out. Like, I'm all excited now. Yeah, I, I'm just over here now being a, a card collector because of these softball cards right now in my hand, holding Morgan Zirkle, Nicole Rangel Mendez, Anissa Urtez, and Deja Mulepola. So I have a, a champion card in my hand right now, and I'm loving it. I do too. I've got Danielle O'Toole, and I've got it. It's from the AUX season, I can tell, and that's where she won it. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about that. The only problem is Danielle's not here. She was a facilitator at AUX. She's a new assistant coach at Cal now, so I can't. I can't get the signature, but I do have the card. <laughs> We've got plenty of those up here. Those will be getting signed all season long. Here's our all-time champions for the Athletes Unlimited Softball Championship season. And it really, um, it had to be Cat Osterman to lead things off. Just an absolute <laughs> legend, one of the greatest to ever do it. Alicia Ocasio's 2021 season was tremendous. I think we keep thinking you know, we'll be right back to it with Alicia Ocasio. When will she get going again? Had a great World Cup qualifier, and we'll see if she can find that form here at Athletes Unlimited. And then Deja Mulipola, the first ever position player to do it. Yeah, she led that season in batting average, home run, and RBI. Just a monster season for Deja Mulipola, being the first non-pitcher to win it. Well, not just Athletes Unlimited softball going on, but lacrosse going on as well. That is big time. How about Charlotte North, who is, I, I, I don't know much about lacrosse, Amanda, but when I watch, I know she's really good. Scored four goals at a two-pointer. They secured MVP honors the other day to lead Team Moreno to a 9-5 victory over Team Colson. That was Thursday night. Last night I was watching that. And for North, it was her 13th multi-goal performance, ninth hat trick of her Athletes Unlimited career. Right now, Taylor Moreno currently sits atop the leaderboard with over 650 points, and that action continues Saturday, starting at 5 Eastern. Team Colson facing Team Apuzo on ESPN2. Then Team Reed meets Team Moreno at 7.30 Eastern, also on ESPN2, Joe Beninati. Courtney Martinez Connor will be on the call. Well, if you joined us, we are currently in a lightning delay here in the fifth ever Athletes Unlimited Championship season. Team, or fourth ever, excuse me, Team McClenny and Team Denim leading things off. McClenny up on Team Denim, eight to three. A lot of free passes in this one. Haley McClenny, the leadoff hitter and captain, has scored every time she has come to the plate. But the lightning delay, not what we wanted to see on opening day here in Rosemont. A little frustrating. Yeah, just such a bummer because we had such a good flow to the game, such a great crowd. And then this happens, which is honestly, you've seen this before at a softball game. We just didn't want to see it today. Well, that's where we are right now. The storm moved in quickly. There are some rain starting to sprinkle here in Rosemont. We're going to send you to alternate programming until we have an update here from Athletes Unlimited Softball in Rosemont, Illinois. Back in Rosemont, Illinois, our game suspended tonight. The weather delay lasting too long. We will not be able to finish here at Athletes Unlimited Softball. Team McClenney and Team Denham were in the bottom of the fifth inning. Team McClenney leading eight to three. This game and the game that should have been played after that at approximately 9.30 Eastern time have both been postponed until Monday, the time and network to be determined. We are back though tomorrow with more Athletes Unlimited softball. What should have been day two and it still will be, but just not the games completed like we thought. Team Rhodes, Team Denim, 2.30 Eastern on ESPN Plus. Shannon Rhodes, a first time Athletes Unlimited captain, last year's Rookie of the Year. And then Team McClenney and Team Mulipola, led by Deja Mulipola, the 2022 champion. That game coming your way at five Eastern on ESPN as well. We apologize for the weather issues here in Rosemont. We will see you tomorrow on ESPN Plus for a doubleheader. We'll send you back to alternate programming now.